Reading and citations are by this is Rick Koppel coming at you from Denver, Colorado. Another episode of Not a Linux Guru Guy. Yeah, so today we're going to be taking a look at a art based distro called Storm OS. A quick look and see what to think about it. Pretty cool distro overall. I think you'll like it. So check it out. So we're going to first look at the website real quick. Should see the uh I have my button dry, should see the storm website right now. Making Arch Linux easy. Yeah, you always hear about Arch Linux being kind of hard to install. It's really not that hard if you just follow directions step by step, but some of that was a little confusing at times to people. And doing command line installs make it hard. This makes it easy. Installs on Calamaris, one of the popular Main installers they have out there. Making Arch Linux easy. But how else does it make Arch Linux easy? Well, we'll find out, won't we? <laughs> um, I'll let you go to the website. I'll put the link down in the description. And uh, you can check out it check it out for yourself, all of the about us and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to go straight over here to download. And so you know where how to get to where to get the ISOs. Okay, then you come to this. This is basically just support. It adds a certain layer of support. It adds premium support. But you get all the same things for free as far as this goes. There's no no uh, downgrade or parts of it. You don't get to install till you pay money. So download, just click download now. And you will have... Now, one thing I need to warn you about is that he's getting rid of the KDE uh, connections here. Download ISOs. Had some issues with them. A little bit of trouble here and there. And I tried to install I can install it. But I was able to install the XFCE icon. The ISO pretty easy. He has two distros here. Two desktop entries. KDE and Plasma. Same thing. KDE and XFCE. <laughs> yeah, so... He's got that on here, but he's getting rid of the KD, so you don't want to download that, and it's going to lose support on it, and you're not going to really help with that. He had ISO problems, and and he's getting finicky on him and stuff, so he decided just to can and go with XFC for the foreseeable future, I guess, until he decides another, another desktop entry is needed or something along those lines. Anyway, Storm OS. So... And you can download from mirror downloads here. And it's also got torrent downloads right there. And they're right there and right there. This is the KDs. They said they see version right here, I think. Uh, no, no, no. This XFC. Here you have the XFC versions of the, of, of the mirror download right there, which takes SourceForge, I believe. And then you also have the one for the uh, torrent download. You download there. I downloaded this one. Or actually one of the ones up here in his normal downloads. What he calls normal. It's basically from his OneDrive or A OneDrive. That he has for the has for the statement. Anyway. So that's that. So that's where you go. That's where you downloads and ISOs. And download and have fun with that. Burn it onto your USB or whatever. Or a bent toy stick or whatever. And you got it good to go. Oh I will say one thing though. On the bent toy stick. It has to be an up to date bent toy stick. Mine wasn't up to date. And I couldn't install anything on there. We were trying to keep try to figure out what was going wrong with, me, with it. And it was really on my end. I his end. You now see my. Um, desktop storm desktop. I already installed it and updated it. So that's all I've done. Really done this side from. From. Make a couple of adjustments I mean, so the power stays on all the time so it won't blink out on us. And I also made it so that, uh, that I can close it out on this keyboard, this mechanical keyboard connected to it. It's kind of got a funky thing where you have to have three hands to hold down the keys to close out a window. So I changed it to, to Super Q, which I'm used to. When you first come up, you get the Storm OS welcome screen. And you have your normal installer here. I'm not sure what's going to install. Is it Storm OS site? 
or installer debug. Arm OS readme. Oh, uh, yeah, have to apply and stuff. And I didn't really investigate that part of that thoroughly, so apologize for that, but yeah, they had an apply there, so apparently you make some setting changes or something, you can apply it to the distro, I guess. Makes changes for some kind of install, but I'm not really sure exactly what to install on it. And you know, the screen's pretty blank and bland. Yeah. Well, the way you do that, if you want some wallpapers, there are wallpapers in there, but what you have to do, you have to click, right click, go to desktop settings. It daggum, there's no wallpapers here. Where are they at? Well, you have to go to folder. See, folder none. They haven't selected a folder yet for you. Now, it says backgrounds, but if you go to backgrounds, there's nothing there. Go to, to, nothing there. What you have to do is you have to come down here to other. It will go into backgrounds. You'll see Storm OS right there. Now, this is one I added in as a test to run. Make sure it works out. I thought it would, and it did. So, anyway, Storm OS is one you'll see here. Double click on that. And then you have all these wallpapers. Click open, and they all appear right here. And you know, sorts of interesting wallpaper to look through. I'm not going to go through all of them now, but there's several wallpapers here yet. There's the Yoda, Baby Yoda. And it looks like a flying horse there. I'm not really sure what it is, but it looks like a flying horse. So, let's see what it is. This is Stormy OS. So oh, it's uh, Zeus holding a lightning bolt. Uh, how funny. That's an interesting look. So yeah, yeah, lots of wallpapers you can go through here. That's an interesting one. A lot to look at and examine. There's a lot of shifts I'm reading around that whirlpool. You have this one, which is, looks like some kind of Godzilla type thing or something. It's not, it's a man, probably from Star Wars, I assume. Okay, a lot of interesting looks here. Here's Superman. Okay, a lot of interesting wallpapers. So we're going to select one here. Yeah, that looks like a Storm OS wallpaper, don't you think? Stick with that for the time being. If you want more wallpapers on here to choose from, like you need more wallpapers, what I have to do is open a term, ter, a terminal, 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 ter, 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 terminal. Yeah, yeah, they don't have it. The or they have it done here, so you can get to it pretty easy. But they don't have it where it's connected up to bound to any key bindings. You have to add that yourself, basically. So. We have this terminal here, and then you do a search. Now, Pac-Man to do a search, you do sudo. Oh, I have to use the right keyboard to boot. <laughs> sudo, apt, no, Pac-Man, Pac-Man. This is arch, not Debian. And you hit dash capital S and small s. So then you just put in wallpaper. And kind of all this wallpaper you can get. There's live wallpaper. I don't know sure. Animated 3D wallpaper. Hey, let's see what that is. We'll copy that in our buffer. So we can just go put pseudo Pac-Man S and live wallpaper. Yes. A capital S just by itself will install capital S smallest next to it. Well, let's do a search. Make S for search. What's well, big S stands for is sync. So it syncs it with the, with the database and pulls down the data from it and the program and all that kind of stuff. So 
That's how you remember that, hopefully. So anyway, yeah, so it's installed that. Now you should be able to go to wallpapers. You'll be able to see those wallpapers in there. If everything works as it should. I don't know what it's going to for sure. Find out here in a second. Okay. So, other. Background. I don't see it here. I'd have to reboot or something like that for a big fact. We'll do a reboot here in a little bit and figure out whether it's working or not. Or maybe the K XFC or, or Arch can't handle three wallpapers here too, so that's another option. Got your menu here, the application menu. Pretty basic. And it's got a co common XFC uh, settings for like default applications, desktop, color profiles, clipboard manager settings, Bluetooth manager, Bluetooth adapters, appearance, S network, advanced network configuration, all on that room software. Basically, your number store there. You know that? And yes, an interesting one called Science here. The with Science. Just got genomic calculation to your calculator, basically. Other did, didn't make it in any categories in here, apparently. Several of them did. Oh, well, there's a lot of wallpaper. Interesting. See what, what you get when you do that. Oh, wow. It's a galaxy floating around there, isn't it? A lot smoother than what it sees on here. The video card isn't real smooth on this animated stuff, so it's a lot smoother on the. Yeah, you could you could have that and set that wallpaper for a while. I'm not sure if that's some wallpaper it has or what. I mean, it's pretty cool. Yeah, not bad. I like it. I'm sorry, you guy. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, Office. It was Abby Ward, Dictionary, Genie Work Calculator, which I already had done in Science, and Osma, Personal Organizer. Never had missed this before. Not sure exactly what it is. Got calendar there. Probably his taskbar there, I assume. Okay, let's take a peek and see what we have for guts of this thing running on you know, h top and all that kind of good stuff we need to set that we'll show you how to do that in a minute anyway make that a little bigger so everybody can see it okay so this nice compositor pair of that swirling galaxy in the background in it and there you are h top and it's got 865 megabytes of memory. Of course, you got a 3D background that's probably taking up some of that space. A little high for XFC, but it usually runs around 6700. Sometimes it's low as 500 if you have a lot of uh, resource friendly stuff in there, but obviously that 3D wallpaper is not resource friendly. It's like hogging stuff, probably. Any, any kind of animated stuff like that's going to use up a certain amount of memory and stuff of that nature. Okay, Arch Linux. Place. That's my computer it's running on. It's a Dell Optiplex 3T3010. Kernel is 6.1.11. Nice. Yeah, uh, yeah, uptime 20 minutes. We'll worry about that. We put it up for the show. And we have 103 Pac Man packages. That's with me not really installing a whole lot. I installed a couple of things to make it work better. So that's pretty cool. Bash 5.1.16. Got FSC 4.18. I think it came with the update. It updated it to 4.18 when it did the update. I think it comes 4.16, is that the earlier one? One that's standard? Yeah, so. 
Dark black eye seams and icons, terminal, terminal fonts. CPU, 3.6 gigahertz for those puppies. And we have Intel graphics, 999 megabytes, have 7,850 megabytes, or 7, basically 8 gig memory stick or something in there, so how much memory it has. And it's using about almost a meg gig of data there. Just one megabyte under one gig. According to NeoFetch at least. Now I've noticed that a lot of times NeoFetch records a little higher memory usage than uh than HTOP does. I'm not sure exactly what it is. There's some resources or something like that. And down here in these things you have the little application. In an office, music streaming app, also the volume control, triple screen recorder, and VLC media player out of the box. Internet, Firefox, Thunderbird for your email out of the box. The graphics, the document scanner and GIMP, and development. Icon browser, common, and accessories, which has all your things like character map and clipboard manager. Optin, that's a positive, it allows for like when you do the uh, uh, terminal window and it's key through, partly. That's, com that's Compton in action. Disk manager, in rooms archive, HP drive, device manager, file manager, mouse pad, text editor. And bulk rename application finder. You got all those fields there to do. All or use. And application finder. That's kind of like kind of like this down here, but it's just all by itself up in and in here, like there. So you go to the application and find the application that way. You can set this up as key binding, and it'll just pop up like this. Kind of like a Rofi does, very similar in nature. So now you got that, you got this is a file manager, through our file manager it has, and then you got your terminal emulator, it just uses a basic GNOME terminal emulator. Then you have the uh, Firefox web browser, and then you have the Storm OS system tool. Here you have the Storm OS Utilities Program. And you use this utilities tool to maintain and upgrade your Storm OS. And refresh your mirrors, your system updates, your optional AAR updates, optional Arch Key Updater, your new Arch Key Ring, install Team Viewer, install LSHW. Install I2C tools for code dims. Install free drivers, reboot, install proprietary drivers like uh, NVIDIA. Yeah. Laptop sections. And, and enable trackpad to tap to click warning automated reboot. Now that's all your maintenance and uh, updates support down here in this section. We also got your game utility scripts here. Okay, you have all of those over here. It's our old maintenance technical stuff. I don't know, I'm really sure exactly what half of it does. I don't know if he Ben even knows, but games. Obviously, a lot of games. So ball launcher system tools. Uh, install Steam Native. Install Heroic Launcher. Install Lutris. Proton G. Main Mango HUD. Bottles, tools, war, war painter, warpinator, gnome calculator, flame shot, transmission, okay, thunderbird, uh, text header, XCD, yeah, we'll install only office, install media stream installer, install minimize tray, program launcher, launch replace all file directory. Launch, replace, all files directory. 
the lawn chaser setting. Watch that little manager wide get him. Watch me stream player. Hey launch for desktop panel. Launch Doug Doug go searching. Launch open website link. Reserve room. Yeah, it's just by top. Yeah, it's like by top is like oh so it just puts program right up there. H top basically but it's top top H top. No, because it looks totally different up here than it does for H top. A little more better organized H top and see you know what you're doing there. The utility program. And it's updating utility program up here. Taps print driver. Enable cup printer. Optional Epson drivers and HP drivers pre installed. Addis donates merchandise. Bring visit their uh, OS site, read me files, merchandise store, distro watch, go find me page, patron page, Discord channel, all Discord. Those bizarre swiki. It's all learning stuff, basically. So anyway, it's got a lot of scripts, a lot of interesting stuff in there. Good, now if you really want to update it, either you go there or you can go to down here, oh, right here, red thing that looks like it's about to explode on you. And you have a thing there now. Let me get a restart. Restart it. It didn't take too long for your login screen to pop up there. Uh, it's this whole thing about every time you just click on a start, it won't start up like that. The nano RC file in here. The thing it does, it's probably when I helped him. Okay, right there it is, Nano RC. Let's check and see what that is. Yeah, that's my Nano RC right there by Rick Koppel. Yeah, so I provided them so he gets all the functionality of Nano. The only thing you have in here. It's, it's commented out out of all the options I throw in there. You have there's more options you can put in here, but these are ones I use. Fine, he liked them, so he, yeah, asked if he could use them on his sister, and I said, sure. Is this one right here? I, I, I hashed this one out because I thought beginning people knew users might need to have the help thing down there. Then remembers, I think if you hit. Control G G right here is list right there. It gives you all the help you need. It gives you more complete help actually. Control G and it gives you all those key bindings and all the stuff that's in here and how you can change them, those kind of things. Yeah, so it's all stuff here. There's a lot of things you can do with this. So it's helpful to know that that's there. Anyway, yeah, uh, you hit Control C, like canceling it. Get out of that. So, I mean, what I usually do is I set that, that delete that hashtag out. It'll just have no help on it. next time I go into it. It'll have no help on there. That's so once you learn the keys, it gives you the extra real estate. You don't want to just have that taking up space down there when you know all those codes for it. you trying to use how to cut paste everything. And it says some non intuitive, but you can change it to be very intuitive if you want it to be. But I'll let you look for that and give it that stuff. And you have a lot of settings, so it has multi buffer, smart home, auto indent, no help, quick blank, 
basically means whenever you like save the file or something like that. Save that. See, I wrote, I wrote not 64 lines down there. This is, uh, when I hit one key, it'll go away. Normally in default six keys, I believe, on that. So, you know, that. And you had a multi buffer, which allows you to have more than one file in its own buffer. It selected color, number color, green. You see the numbers on there, green. Line numbers, which puts line numbers on the side of it. Mouse, which allows you to use your mouse to move around and stuff more. At blanks and soft wrap. So soft wrap basically wraps your lines that are longer your screen and we're gonna wrap that way. And at blanks will wrap them at blanks. So they between so words won't get chopped in half and stuff like that. You have to figure out what? A B I D. A bid. Interesting. So yeah. So you got that. That's one thing I was wondering if he had in here still and he does. And you can theme it out. I think, yeah. It's appearance in, in here. It's your appearance. And it's right there. Enter. And then you can change the thing. So like I say, you didn't like dark. Dark black eyes. There's this uh, theme here. Colloid. You want a colloid. Yeah. And it changes, yeah, everything changes. Uh, window theming changes. Dracula. It's a little thinner there. So heavy on the. Go back up here and give it a black eye so it just. Yeah, sir, so you go back to wallpaper search. I'm going to try one that's normal. Elementary wallpaper is default wallpaper is default wallpaper. And kind of extension. That's an extension. Virtually, it's what you to have. Start to Show how to do this real simple. I have left that out on the arch. I didn't get the email. And then, you know, Pac Man. Yes. Arch. It's just in there. And uh, standalone wallpapers. I'm sure all our spinach wallpapers have in it, but what they look like here. Nervous. And then. Garshland and wallpapers. And we can look at that one, open that up. And there's your arch wallpapers. You got a few uh, art themed like arts. You got a few of those in here. Nice. These arts, by the way. Hmm. You have an A here, A there, A there, and you have some nature ones. They're just not not art specific, but there's nature like that one. Nice, like that one. Yeah, you have a lot of wallpapers here you can look at. That's how you install wallpapers on here. If you want wall additional wallpapers to look at, you can see what they look like. Arch has some nice wallpapers here, nature wise. Bad. Not mad at all. 
Here we have a lot of nice wallpapers in here to look at. But here, right down here, see this little thing popping up for temperatures. Oh, Denver, Colorado, sunny. Temperatures are 23 degrees. Clicking, going properties here. And you can change it to whatever city you're living in. And all the rest of this stuff should, should switch out good fairly well. And, uh, yeah, all sorts of time zones. Change it by hitting that, and then you make changes to it. And you close it out when you're done. Sweet mail, oh, this little mail feature in the widget they have in here. Basically, what you do is you click that, go to property. And you can put in your mail program that you have. You add your mailboxes in here. And it'll automatically read your mail for you. It'll tell you how many you have. Click them up. It'll bring them up to look at. That's a nice little, little feature you might want to use. Some people like that a lot. And the date's pretty small over here. Like to me. Guess what? You can change that if you want to. Right click on it, go to properties. You can change your time tooltip formats, time settings, change your time zone there. Calendar. Yeah, it's wrong time zone. One uh, one problem with this, with at least XFC, is it has formats in all these places, all the places seems like. So that's Eastern time zone there. Yeah, so I don't know. It's not picking up my my settings on time zone and everything from other places. It's got Eastern here. Not sure how to change it, but yeah, I think he's. Uh, Yeah, I think you just change it by typing in. I'm going to go with. I'm going to guess this is M. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's 23 which is accurate. My time right now is 323 in the afternoon on the Thursday, February 18th or 16th, 16th, 16th. So, yeah. Now, if you know what you're doing, you can also change this over here. I know what I'm doing, so ha ha ha. There's something weird about this. That's the day right there. A H D gives you uh, Thursday, February sixteenth. That's the month. That's uh day of the week. Then I is your hour on a uh, twelve hour clock. It's hours. And minutes, and he gives you your camera am on that. Which, if you have a 24 o'clock course, you'll need that. So, yeah, you just. So, anyway, that's not about I wanted to show you how you can set the uh, fonts to be higher. So, up here. Yeah, it's more readable, easier to read. So, yeah.
That part's pretty easy setting the font size. <laughs> yeah, compared to the other one, yeah. So anyway, that's what you got down there in that line. Pretty cool. And you got said you change. You can really say your settings for these wallpapers. And Storm OS, don't forget there. Big news coming from Storm OS is that they're discontinuing the KD version of their distro. We're just going to stick with XFC. This is what you like. If you like features on this, you like the weather app, you like the wallpapers, you like that. You can just sort of join up with and and work with and that kind of thing. So, yeah, so, so don't, don't remember, don't forget to subscribe if you have a mind to. And uh, we'll check out other videos later on. And don't forget, may the Linux Force be with you. Bye.